Hello and welcome to Mix and Jam, a channel about game development experimentation, and today's project is inspired by Metroid Dread. At a certain point of the game, you can use the Speed Booster ability, which allows Samus to run at supersonic speeds and destroy a specific set of blocks. This mechanic also contains an additional move called Shine Spark, which allows the player to store the energy from the boost to perform a directional dash. Because of its incredible gameplay and visuals, I wanted to see just how much I could learn and practice my game development skills by trying to recreate the ability using the Unity engine. Let's break down the main components needed for the Speed Booster recreation. First, we have the basic platformer control, which allows the character to perform actions like sliding and wall jumping. Then, there's the implementation of the actual mechanic that modifies the speed of the character and defines the different states of the speed boost. And finally, we have all the effects that improve the visuals and the game feel. I started by creating a new project in Unity and setting up a basic level. Then, I imported Jamo, the official character from the channel, into the project. I had to adapt the character's movement script for it to work better in a 2D environment. I added a simple jump to the movement by modifying the vertical velocity from the character controller. To add the wall jump, I used a ray cast pointing forward to check any wall contact. And with that condition met, the character flips its direction and adds an additional jump. For the character slide, I created a core routine that during an interval moves the player automatically in a direction and makes the character controller height smaller. An improvement I made to this logic was to have the character only finish the slide if there was no contact above it, and for this I used a raycast pointing upwards. With the basic movement actions implemented, I started working on the script to control the speed booster ability. First thing I did was to set up a core routine that when activated would wait for a few seconds before going into the speed boost state. The idea is that the character needs to charge for a certain time and distance to fully succeed. If the player stops or changes direction, the charge gets interrupted, which I implemented in my script by forcing the core routine to stop. In case of a successful charge, I wrote a function to activate a boolean that would affect the original movement of the character, acting as a speed multiplier. In order to improve the feel of the character's speed, I downloaded a sprint animation on the Mixmo website and added it to the character's animation blend tree. And during the ability, I modified the wall jump behavior to basically maintain the speed boost even when flipping directions. For when the character is grounded and stops moving during the boost, I added a function that would work as a break, gradually slowing down the player and not allowing movement for that period. At this point in the project, I wanted to make some visual improvements to the mechanic. I began by working on the character shader and adding a few Fresnel nodes on the character's emission that blink with the use of time nodes. I've prepared a look for when the player is charging the boost and when the ability is activated, which basically alternates the blink between white and blue. When taking a closer look at the game, you will notice that there's also a distortion effect in front of Samus when the boost is activated, really selling the idea that she is going super fast. And to replicate this, I created a semi-sphere looking shape on Blender and placed it in front of the character. Then I created another shader for it that does a lot of different things to that mesh. First, it uses a texture that I created as a transparency mask. That mask region is also used to place another image that can use UV offsetting to move it outwards. This image is then replaced with a noise texture which is used as the mask for the distortion effect. That effect is made by simply adding the noise result 
to the screen position and sanding that to the scene color node. To finish the effect, I used the space of the entire mesh to offset another noise texture that would represent smoke. If you want a little bit more reference for distortion effects in general, there's a really cool video from Gabriel Aguiar showcasing some implementations of this type of effect in Unity. After this, I continued doing some code to create the Shine Spark. I made the initial state of it get activated when the player crouches in the middle of the super boost, which also pauses the character movement for a while and starts a coroutine that serves as the amount of time the player can have the energy stored. If that time is over, the player loses the ability. If the player still has the energy and presses a specific key, the character freezes its movement for a little while, allowing the player to choose a direction, which in code was made by taking the data from the movement input and rounding up the values into 8 directions. After the freeze period is over, the character performs the shine spark towards the direction until it collides with an object. Another thing I added was a check to compare the angle between the shine spark direction and the collision normal angle. Just like in the game, if the collision angle is diagonal, the shine spark then reactivates the speed booster. After this, I proceeded to do a lot of animation work to make this project look better. I made unique poses for every possible shine spark direction and I also had to adapt a lot of Mixamo animations to transform them into impact animations for the end of every Shine Spark direction. Since it's possible to Shine Spark in midair, I also made a special animation transition for the Shine Spark that maintains the jump loop while speeding up the motion. And for some polish, I made a bunch of particle systems to stay as close as possible from the original game. For the speed charge, I made the circle emission and the little jetpack fire particle. I also made some effects for when the boost actually takes off, which is the smoke emission that uses a texture sheet to animate the frames, and the spark effect, which I made by cranking up the frequency noise value on the particle system. I also made emissions for the moment when the energy is stored, when the shine spark is being charged, and finally, the shine spark effect itself, which I made by combining a mesh similar to the distortion one with a spark particle and a huge spinning emission that uses the orbital velocity over time. I parented all shine spark emissions to an object that could be rotated to the specific ability direction. After that, I downloaded this free sci-fi construction kit by Sick Hat Games from the Asset Store to make my scene look a little bit better. And to finalize the project, I made a better level to play around with and added the blocks that can only be destroyed by using the speed booster ability. And after a bit of adjustments, this is how the project turned out. If you're interested in downloading the project and checking out the code behind it, there's a link for the project's repository in the description of this video. A massive thanks to those of you who support me on Patreon, including these top tier supporters. And if you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing and sharing this video with friends. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.